If the jury sees your picture, they should convict. You're prosecuting based on your picture. The prosecutor has decided that it's a triable case and success is uh, possible. But they may not have your picture unless you do a good job. They may have 12 different pictures. So if your picture is incomplete, then that leaves the door open for the defense to change the picture. I'm just going to show you an example of what incomplete might be. This is an exhibit showing some skid marks. It's presented to the witness. Do you recognize exhibit 2B? The witness says yes. How do you recognize that? I took the photograph. Does it truly and accurately represent what you saw with your eyes? Yes, it does. What's depicted in the photograph? There are skid marks from the defendant's vehicle. What are skid marks? Marks made by the tires that are locked and they're sliding. The prosecutor then goes to, did you measure them? How long were they? What else did you do? Measured the friction of the road. What did that do? It allowed me to calculate speed and, and off they go to the opinion. The one thing they never told the jury though is why they look the way they look. Why the appearance is what it is. Why are these two marks dark and very wide? And why are these two marks narrow and very light? And it's because these are the front tires and there's a lot more weight on the front of the vehicle during braking and so it presses down on the tires and flattens them. And because there's more weight, there's more friction and because there's more friction, the marks are darker. And then similarly, if you take weight off the rear tires when the vehicle leans forward, those tires round out a little bit and get narrower and there's not as much friction so they aren't as dark. Nobody ever told the jury that. I watched a defense expert talk about that in a way that was totally honest, but was deceptive. And what the defense attorney did was showed the same exact photograph to the defense expert and said, did you review that? Yes. Is there anything that caught your eye? And the defense expert said, yes, the appearance of the tire marks. Now they appear the way they should appear. Dark in the front, lighter in the rear, wide in the front, narrower in the rear. They are, they're classic. That's four wheel lock skidding. He said, what was it about the appearance that caught your eye? And everything this expert said is true, except the conclusion you would draw is false. He said, well, <clears throat> two of the marks are very dark and wide, and two of the marks are narrow and light. What did you attribute that to? He asked the expert. The expert says, which is totally true, it could have something to do with the brakes. What does he want the jury to believe? What does the defense expert want the jury to believe when he says it could have something to do with the brakes? There's a problem with the brakes. In closing argument, the defense attorney in his closing argument just stretches that a little bit further. He says, ladies and gentlemen, you heard my experts say there could have been something wrong with the brakes. He did not say there could have been something wrong with the brakes. That would be perjury because the expert knows those marks are the way it's supposed to look. What the expert said was it could have something to do with the brakes, but now the defense expert extends it and tells the jury that he actually said there could have been something wrong with the brakes. So the defense attorney continues his closing argument and he says, ladies and gentlemen, this is a civil case. This is about a repair that wasn't done or a repair that was done incorrectly because the brakes failed. The jury was out for a week. They're out for five days in a straightforward speed from skid marks case. And they were arguing about the brakes because in that room with the jury is the bailiff. And the bailiff, after about three days, is wringing his hands saying, how can they be arguing about the brakes? There's four marks on the road. Everything's working right. So all because nobody ever explained to the jury why they looked that way. The picture was incomplete to them. They didn't know why it should look that way. These cases are tough. And I, I know Tim will agree with me, and I know David will agree with me. Relatively, shooting somebody 
Straightforward. Do you have a weapon? Do you have a shooter? Do you have a victim? Motive? Didn't like him. Motive? Beating up my girlfriend. Motive? Ran away from me. I mean, these cases are tough. That's a defense that nobody would ever think could happen, and the jury's out for five days. So for those of you who work on these cases, and I know I do a lot of training with prosecutors, prosecutors that work on these cases, you shouldn't think that these are the easy ones. The ones that are the easier ones are the ones that involve fewer possible problems. And these, these cases are very tough. Who has the best picture of the scene? You do. The defense attorney didn't see it. The defense expert didn't see it. How can your picture not be the one that wins out? The only way is if you don't paint a good picture, if you leave part of it out somehow. You want to arm yourself. During your direct examination, you can establish techniques that will help you when you get cross-examined. So when you're being direct examined, it's a very friendly conversation. The prosecutor asks you things, you answer. If you want to clarify, you say, may I clarify? The prosecutor says, sure, go ahead, because you're their witness. If you can establish to the jury that that's the way it's supposed to sound, then you can do those things in, in cross-examination also. You can say, may I clarify? What will the defense attorney say when you ask, may I clarify? Nope. Only answer the question, sir. I'll get back to that. You'll have time to do that. They don't want you to clarify. So I'm gonna show you a couple things you can do during direct to establish what I call a conversational style. If you're talking to a friend of yours and you say, can I just explain that for a second? Do you expect them to say, no, just answer my question? Do you expect them to say, no, I didn't ask you that? No, I'll get back to that? No. You don't expect them to say no. You expect them to say, what do you want to explain? Go ahead. That's conversational. Well, the jury is in that trial perhaps for the first time. They've never been in a jury before. That juror has never been in the courtroom before. So he or she doesn't really know what's supposed to go on. The only thing they know is what they see on TV. Ask a question, answer it. Ask a question, answer it. You can change that. You can have them look at you talking to the prosecutor in direct and understand that this is a conversation. You're there to give them information. And it's gonna sound like a conversation. So you have tools that you can use to define what a conversation sounds like. Watch this. It will really help you in cross because the defense attorney won't wanna let you do it. But the jury will say, why won't he let him do it? That's the way it sounds. That's the way it's supposed to be. Officer, aren't there, other fields, aren't there other sobriety tests that you didn't use in this case? I mean, if you do the standardized field sobriety tests, then you don't do the alphabet backwards, you don't do count from 100 backwards and skip every four. You don't do things that aren't the standardized field sobriety tests. So if you haven't given those other tests, you haven't given them. Years ago, they were the tests because there were no standardized field sobriety tests. So the defense attorney wants, wants you to admit that there are other tests that you didn't use. All you used were the standardized ones. I don't know why that's going to be good, but he wants the jury to think you could have done even more. So he says, aren't there other sobriety tests that you didn't use? The answer is yes, there are. Counting backwards, saying the alphabet backwards. Uh, there are lots of tests. So. You want the jury to know that there are other tests, but it's not negative that you didn't do them. You just don't do them anymore. You do the standardized ones. So you say to the defense attorney, yes, there are. May I explain? What does the jury expect the answer to be? May I explain? They expect the answer is yes, go ahead. Why do they expect that? Because you said this to the prosecutor two or three times in your direct. And when you said to the prosecutor, the prosecutor said, go ahead. Sure, tell the jury, because they're on your side. So now the jury thinks that when you say these words, the other person says, go ahead. Only the defense attorney doesn't want to say, go ahead, because the defense attorney does not want you to explain. He may have to say something like, I'll get back to that. Or ask you the next question and just skip the answer. 
because he doesn't want an explanation. So establishing in your direct that you can ask to explain sets the stage for when I ask, the attorney says, go ahead. You train, you train the jury. Officer, there are there other methods of reconstruction that you didn't use in this case? Now, another way to answer this would be to just give the other methods and tell why. In other words, give the explanation. Don't answer it yes or no. The evidence in this case didn't allow the use of other methods, sir. There's a method called momentum, but this crash only involved one vehicle, and you can't use momentum. This wasn't a pedestrian strike, and so we couldn't use the methodologies for pedestrian strikes. You can just give the answer. Sure, there are other methods, but they don't apply to this case. Officer, did you rely on what another officer told you? Because sometimes you show up at the scene, you're going to be the one to ultimately give the SFSTs, and the other officer who's already there has encountered the defendant, and he says, this guy is just crocked. This guy's like probably a 3-0, he can't even stand up. So he told you something about the sobriety or the impairment of the defendant. Officer, did you rely on what another officer told you in reaching your conclusion? Well, you did the standardized field sobriety test. You arrested him based on your observations, not on the other officer's observations. So you want the jury to know, no, I didn't rely on the other officer. I didn't show up and the officer said, he's really drunk. And you walk over and go, you're under arrest, sir. Get in the back of the car. Because that's what the defense attorney wants to portray. You relied on the other officer. I'm not sure I know exactly what you mean, sir. He told me that he felt that the defendant was impaired, but I did all the tests that I would ordinarily do. I did, and you just go on to tell the jury. I didn't rely on that. I didn't make my decision based on that. Or you can ask him, what do you mean by rely? And let him squirm for a while to figure out a good way to articulate it. He still won't be able to help himself because you didn't rely. You didn't do that. 